uh, you're going to be able to almost leave go the wheel. Now, don't do that and be stupid or get silly on me. Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for all being part of it. I do appreciate all of you. Uh, when you get a chance, of course, hit the like button. Subscribe. It's free if you haven't yet, and you know the rigmarole. <laughs> okay, today we are doing how to lower the bug. Okay, some ways it's free, in some ways it's not, depending on what you want to do. Okay, also I'll bring up how to raise the bug at the same time. So that's what's unique about these cars. But there is some cautions and warnings I'll go over. Uh, I'm going to be lowering mine, not real crazy low, but I will be. Uh, I wasn't even going to do this yet. However, my parts will be here this week, but I'm going to start on the heater boxes in a couple of days, which should be next week's video. Uh, it's a cheap, easy fix. I brought it up in a short a few weeks back. Some people may snicker or laugh, but if you don't have a welder, a TIG, you know, stuff like that for thin metals, and you're doing something that gets hot, this is the way you end up doing it. It's a cheap, easy, effective way that I've done before with heater boxes instead of spending $400 on a pair. So anyhow, a few people ask about lowering the beetle. Some people are new to it, and here's all different ways that you can. So I'll go ahead and do my best. I'll show some photos. I'll show the car and a couple of different things. So let's get on it. Okay, so let's start up front first, okay? Uh, this is a beam. I got this, I believe, from CIP1. I got this about a year ago, believe it or not. I happened to go in there and look, and I got this last November. They had a uh, Black Friday sale last year, and I thought, I need this right now. A year later, now I'm getting ready to do it soon. So anyhow, uh, no, this is not adjustable, okay? Uh, this is a standard beam. I think I got it a year ago for around $310, free shipping, everything. The whole kit and caboodle, I was actually shocked by that. So I don't know where they're at now in price. I was going to get a narrowed beam, and I didn't do that. Uh, I was looking at something on this. I didn't do the narrowed beam, and I should have, but they're a little bit more expensive. Uh, and we'll get into that in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, somebody that was in my garage recently seen these and said, oh, you have an adjustable beam. No, this is for your torsion leaves. When your torsion leaves go in there and you tighten these up, it holds them. So that's what those are. Uh, now, let's start on the front end. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, when you go to figure out what you want to do, how low you want to go, okay? Now, here's the first and easiest way you can do it. All right, so here's the first thing with the front end, okay? These are a set of drop spindles. I have to clean these up. Uh, these actually came off of the car that I did the disc brake and drop spindle conversion on. And he told me, you know, these are for drum brakes, so, you know, you can have them. Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to go over to disc in the front since we're doing a stroker motor. Uh, to help it stop a little quicker. Uh, so the drums, backing plates, the drop spindles, I'm probably going to sell them all as one group because they're like brand new. Uh, but beyond that, uh, these are empty drop spindles. Now what they do is they create a two and a half inch drop, okay? And as you can see, let me, let me bring you up closer here. Can you see how these are not centered in here? They're up higher, okay? So if they were stock, this spindle would be coming out about right here, but they are offset up two and a half inches. What that does is it relocates the wheel up higher. So the front end is down. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So doing this is probably one of the easiest things to do for your front end because you don't have to really change your beam or change anything you're just releasing the troweling arms off of there and changing out your spindle. It comes in a little kit. Uh, these are actually pretty nice. This is empty, and uh, truthfully, I think CB Performance has them. Probably their own brand. I can't remember. So there's a couple places that do sell these. Uh, I do recommend these 
to be honest with you, not that that means much to anybody, but these are a quick way of dropping two and a half inches without getting into four, five, six, seven hundred dollars for an adjustable beam. And we are going to go over that in a minute. Uh, the only thing I can caution you with. So here you have your drop spindles. Okay. Now, normally your spindle would be in the center. Okay. It's up. So what that's going to do is take and move your wheel up two and a half inches, which will inherently drop the car down. Now, one thing to caution of, I don't have my fenders on to show you, but once your wheel goes up, it's going up into the fender. Now, I had my 72, as you can see here, that's a cool clip, huh? <laughs> My son did that real quick when I was leaving one day with no deck lid on. That's me. Anyhow, once you get too far up in, I had 145s on the front of that. Okay, because the 165s would not fit. They were rubbing. So sometimes you have to get down to a 155 or a 145. Uh, I think some people use them smart car tires or something. I don't know. Somebody brought that up to me recently. I've never done that, but you can go online and find the 145s. Now, thing that I don't like about the 145s is you don't have enough meat on the road. And what I mean by that is you don't have enough tire on the pavement. Uh, obviously the 165 80s, 15s, uh, the factory Beetle tires, they're about that wide. And no, I'm not exaggerating. So the less rubber you have meet in the pavement, now you lose handling and stopping power. And what I mean by that is when I have my 145s on, I know if it was raining out or going around bends, the front end would start to slide a little. That can get white knuckled real quick, you know. And not too much scares me, but that made me nervous, uh, especially with Heather in the car. And truthfully, when you're stopping, when you only have like that much tread touch on the ground, yeah, you're going to keep going. So, you know, I, I do like the drop spindles. They're really nice. Uh, I'm going to run them on this. I'm just going to do the uh, disc brake conversion with the drop spindle, so I'll do that all in one video like I did before. But there's other ways around this, so let's get into the front beam now. All right, back to the beam. Now, the two and a half inch drop spindles, like I said, can be done without altering pretty much anything else, hopefully, unless your tires rub, you'll have to go to a smaller diameter, you know? So, okay, uh, also width, I'm sorry, not just diameter. This here is a factory beam. Now you can buy the beams that are adjustable or you can do it yourself. You can purchase these here. All right, they're the adjusters. And what would need done, and I do not recommend this if you are not a good welder, I'm not uh, yet, or if you don't know how to cut stuff and measure properly, and I'm not putting you down not everybody can do this. I wouldn't attempt it, but that's just me. It has nothing to do with working on Volkswagens. It has to do with geometry and doing it properly and being safe. All right, I had to, I had to disclose that. Uh, it makes me feel better. These here would end up being cut out, and you would actually measure evenly on each side of it because those adjusters, as you can see, will sit right inside of here. So somebody would need to actually measure evenly where they would need to be seated, cut these out, put them in, and weld them. Now, before you can do that, obviously, you need to remove your beam, and you know the deal, you know what I mean? If you want to do it to your factory beam that you have on the car, you can go ahead and, you know, remove your troweling arms, uh, you need to remove the uh, torsion bars, everything out of here. Your steering box, you know, uh, your steering dampener. My brain's all over the place. You got to have it stripped down like this, technically. So there's a little bit of work involved. Removing these front beams aren't hard because I actually did a video on that. And getting them out 
is not even tedious. It's just a lot of little parts got to come off, okay? So you can do the adjusters very cheap yourself. If you're good at cutting, measuring, and welding, okay, you can do them yourself and save a lot of money, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is you can buy a beam with the adjusters built in, like I should have done. <laughs> I was being cheap. Actually, I've been considering buying an adjustable beam and just selling this one since it was never installed yet. Give somebody a little bit of a break. I may do that. Uh, here's the deal. Buy them if you don't feel confident cutting and welding with the adjusters built in already. You can do that, and they're very nice because even if you go with the drop spindles and you need to raise a little bit, you can do that. Or if it's not low enough for you, then you can go ahead and lower it down even more, okay? So there's a couple of ways of doing that when it comes to the adjusters. I did see somebody uh, actually had a rod coming down through their trunk that they turned and the car went up and down. It hooked onto the adjuster somehow. I'm not up to date with that. I really don't understand. So you can get an adjustable beam or you can make your own and save yourself a lot of money. That's entirely up to you. So let's go on to the next thing about narrowing. So now we're going to go to the point of talking about narrowed beams. I know some of you know all this stuff, but for the people that don't, well, it's educational for them. And it doesn't mean that I know everything. Going down to a narrowed beam will help a lot too, because if your tire is meeting that fender lip, okay, then you're going to have problems. So you need to suck them tires in, wheels technically, so that they can go up inside of the fender. Now, they have 2 inch and they have 4 inch. I think they're 6 inch. I'm not positive. i got to look now. Uh, you can go 2 inch or 4 inch. Most people seem to choose the 4 inch. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, when you get into narrowing the beam in, you can go too far and start rubbing in the inner well inside with the back of the tire. So you got to be careful with that because then you're putting spacers on to pop the wheel back out. Not a good idea. So can you narrow these yourself? I would recommend if you're going to take your factory German beam, go get it done. Don't, don't do that yourself. And about the time somebody charges you to cut these, put different uh, ends on, you're better off just buying the beam and being done with it, uh, to be honest with you. But like I said, now what comes into play a lot of times is guys will put drop spindles on and they will put the narrowed beams on with adjusters. To me, that's kind of a really nice setup when you're doing something like that, you know, uh, because you have adjustment all the way around. You've got your adjustments here to get the car up and down. Your two and a half inch already dropped the wheels up inside and the narrowed part is pulling the wheels in up inside our big curvy sexy fenders. So that's another way to do it. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to start lowering, start going narrow. So the price comparison uh, with the beams, I'll show you here. a pretty good price comparison when you're starting with uh, you know a stock beam then an adjustable beam then a narrowed beam then a beam that's more narrow it does add up fast I know now something else you need to know uh, if anybody wonders what that is that's a speaker box <laughs> sorry <laughs> trying to hold the beam up something else you need to know when you're going down to a narrowed beam okay you have your torsion leaves in here that run through it. And I'll show you those in a moment. Your torsion leaves, you're going to need ones that are shorter because you're bringing these together. So your torsion arms or torsion beams, I call them, or torsion rods, they're going to need to be shorter. So there's another expense there. So this can start adding up. That's why if you're just looking for just a quick couple of inches, uh, two and a half inch drop, 
you can easily put the drop spindles on and maybe have to go with a smaller tire. But when you start getting into adjustments, you know, further and further, you know, then you're going to want to go ahead and do it the proper way and do the adjustable beam. You're going to want it narrowed. And like I said, you're going to need the torsion leaves that are shorter so that this can go together closer. I, I hope that made sense. Okay, here's something else you really need to know about the front beam and lowering the front end. Here is something else that I wanted to bring up. I know I'm all over the place here, but I'm trying to get all this information and make the video as short as possible. Uh, when you go to a disc brake conversion, oftentimes it will set them out further. Some of these kits seem to pop the wheels out, or I should say move the wheels out an inch, up to an inch. That's, that's a lot. So when your wheel is being pushed out an inch, obviously you're going to need a narrowed beam. All right. Or maybe you can get lucky and get some offset wheels that sit in further, but then you're going to rub the caliper, which is not a good idea. So the best bet is if you're doing a disc brake conversion, I'm not telling you you have to do a narrow beam, but it would make life a little bit simpler. When you start dabbling in these things, as in raising or lowering a car, a lot comes into play, like the geometry and everything. So you need to make sure you do it properly. Don't think that you're just gonna buy an adjustable beam, bolt it up and go on with life. It doesn't work that way, okay? I'm not saying that it's a hard job, but there's a lot of calculations that come into play. Uh, and here is something else that comes into play, caster. The beetles don't have enough caster, so you're gonna have to focus on this one, okay? This is the front of the car. Let me move the camera. The Beetles from the factory don't have enough caster, okay? And it wasn't something that they uh, screwed up. That wasn't what it was. This is built as an economy car, okay, back in the day. Uh, I know they had the major Autobahn, whatever in the heck it was uh, over there. But I think this was thought of a little prior to that. And there wasn't enough caster on these. And I've heard others talk about this and I've experienced it. When you start going about 55, 65, 70 mile an hour on the highway, you're starting to get that wondering going on. Okay. Isn't that pretty cool the way I did that? <laughs> also, you can get that effect where the wheel is going like this. Uh, I don't know what to compare it to, but your wheel will start to jiggle a little bit. Uh, that is because there's not enough caster. When you start using an adjustable beam, you're moving the geometry pretty much all a little bit worse. <laughs> and it's okay because they make these caster shims like you see here. And they will go on the frame head between the frame head and the lower part of the beam. I'll bring you down, I'll show you real quick here, and then I'll explain why you need to do that. This is where the front beam bolts on, okay? You have your two bolts going through, all right? And your beam sits against these. You would put them caster shims on the bottom, not the top, because you wanna kick that wheel back out at the bottom. The caster shims would fit in the bottom, and sometimes people will stack them too deep just in case, you know, they need that. Uh, when you do that, you may need the longer bolts that they sell. And that will give you the geometry that you actually need, okay? And I'll explain something when you do the caster shims. Now, how this works is this is your beam. We'll pretend right now it's bolted to the frame head. I know this is a lot of information, but I'm trying to cover everything. When you put the caster shims on, you're putting them on the bottom, the bottom of the frame head, which will kick the beam like that. Because once you lower the beetle, the torsion arms are going to change. And so is the trailing arms, or I'm sorry, control arms. You need to shim that out on the bottom, okay, to give it more caster because it actually doesn't have enough caster to begin with. 
And something very important you need to know when adding caster, when lowering it, hang tight. Now, one thing you do need to know also, I say one thing, a lot of things. When you add the shims, okay, to give yourself more caster, your steering wheel is going to get a little heavy, all right? You're only going to notice it probably if you're in like a parking spot backing out or leaving a car cruise. Then it'll get a little heavy, a little tighter, or you can remove the steering wheel. <laughs> it's nothing to really uh, worry about. It's not that noticeable, but you may notice it if you know your Beetle that well. Uh, so it will get a little bit heavier in the steering when you're going really slow. Once you start ro rolling along, you're not going to notice it at all. So that is something I did want to bring up, though, because I feel it's important to know that. Once you add the caster shim or shims, depending on how far you push it out at the bottom, and don't forget them long bolts, uh, you're going to notice something amazing. When you are going down the highway at 65 mile an hour, because... Now we do more things in the Beatles than we did back in the day, and we'll go over that in a second. You're not going to be going like this on the highway, trying to keep it straight. I know on my 72, I had to do that. I remember it very well, and that was like 10 years ago. You're going to be able to sit back and relax, and for the most part, as long as your front end is lined up, make sure you get a front end alignment when you do all this, uh, you're going to be able to almost leave go of the wheel. Now, don't do that. And be stupid or get silly on me. However, you'll be able to go down the highway without wandering all over the place when you give it more caster because that's what it needs, okay? These were actually meant to be driven around these cities. It was an economy car when it was made with that concept, and I'm not saying they weren't built for the highways, but they weren't built for the highways. It was an economy car. A lot of people back in the 60s, 70s, uh, it was usually a second car. You know, they took uh, their vans or their larger cars when they did an outing with their kids or something. The Beatles were more of a backup car that they used, although I used mine as a daily driver back then. So, Okay, we're going to go over one more thing about the front, and then we're going to move to the back, and I'll try to speed this up, because I know you guys will be fast-forwarding the film, if not. So, if, in fact, you want to go a different direction, there's one more you can go, all right? You can go ahead and put through rods in, uh, and this is what they look like. Now, you can do the through rods. What you're doing is removing your torsion leaves. I promised I'd show you them. Let me get them now. These are your torsion leaves. Excuse the zip ties. I'm holding them together. Heather had removed them out of the front beam for me. And as you can see, there is what you tighten, and they go inside of here. And that holds the torsion leaves in place, okay? And over here, you have indentions in the ends. And that is where your control arms go on. Now, obviously, these torsion leaves come out of here. So to do the through rod system, and I'm going to explain this, these torsion rods, leaves, bars, whatever you want to call them, they must be removed. You would install the through rods through the beam, then you put your control arms back on, okay, and I won't get into the whole DIY on that, but instead of the torsion leaves, I call them leaves, uh, then you can go ahead with the through rods, but when you do that, you've lost all your tension, so then you put on air shocks. It, it, there's so many ways you can do this. So the through rods must have air shocks on them because when you put the through rods in, the car is going to drop, okay? Probably too much for your liking. And then you're going to have to put air shocks on, and then you have an adjustable front end all over again. So there's a lot of ways you can really do this. Here is another way. I know, I'm overloading you with information.
you can actually, and I do not recommend doing this. I caught that somebody did it on my 72 when I got it because it had drop spindles and this car was kissing the ground. I mean, it literally was like that far from the ground underneath. I could barely get into a gas station. I couldn't figure out what they did. So I looked, there was drop spindles, but it was still really, really low. Looked good, but I couldn't drive it anywhere. If I, if I went over a dip in the road, you know, it was free entertainment for other people. So I ended up removing the control arms to find out that somebody removed some of the torsion leaves, or if you want to call them rods, that's up to you. I call them leaves. They removed some of them, and I'll show you what they did. So what they did, from what I can remember, it's been a while, eight or 10 years, they removed some of the smaller leaves is what they did. And I even think they removed one or two of the longer ones because when I pulled the control arm out, I mean, I was in shock. There was only a couple leaves in there and that is dangerous. I don't like it. It does work, but I absolutely do not recommend doing that. Yes, it's cheap, it's free, it's easy to do, but I don't like it. I immediately went and found some torsion leaves and put them in there properly and put it back together. So I don't recommend doing that. All right, so for you Super Beetle guys, which my last project on the channel, as you recall, was a Super Beetle. And you can get lowering struts. Uh, what do I recommend? Uh, MP does sell them. I've never personally used them. But you can go through Topline. And they are pretty much just geared for Super Beetles. Uh, you can see their website here. And Topline is specifically for Super Beetles. Okay. So I would highly advise that you go through them if you're going to get lowering struts. And it's, I believe on the Super Beetles, it's kind of nice because you just put the struts on, adjust, and you're lowered. So, and I forget, maybe they can go down to three inches. I really can't remember. So uh, Super Beetle guys, you're not out of luck, you know, and I think the Super Beetles handle very nicely compared to the standards, but who am I to judge, you know, so... <laughs> Let's move on to the back end. I'll make the back end brief. So let's move to the back end. Okay, so we are at the back of the car, obviously. Uh, my transmission and everything is out, but I promised to do this video to like five different people. So bear with me on this. Uh, if your transmission was in, okay, you're going to remove your shock because you're going to be messed around with the geometry back here. Uh, PB blast these three bolts in advance like the night before or coil whatever you use leave in the comments what you like i use pb blast but i heard that coil is good and I, and I totally got off track so you're going to loosen these up now when you go to drop this down this is not a game this has tension on it it will harm you okay so try to be very careful doing this i'm going to be lowering this one notch when I do it, I'll do the video, and you know how I am. I'll do in-depth on it. Uh, so what you're going to do is your cap here that covers your torsion arm, your torsion bar. There's four bolts here. I don't know if you can see them. Up. You're going to loosen those four bolts and pull this cap off. While you have it off, it's always nice to put a new rubber in there, okay? Uh, what you're going to do also is remove your bump stop because you're dropping the car down, okay? And here's a little chart to show you right here. Because you can adjust the outer and inner, okay? A lot of people usually drop one notch. Okay, now... Keep the laughter to a minimum. These are for my son's truck. So <laughs> they're pretty big. Time to do a Baja. Uh, these are really nice tread. Truthfully, when you start lowering too much, especially with a swing axle, you start having this. Okay, and here's a picture of one. I can assure you, I'm not putting anybody's car down at all. But if you want to start wearing the insides of the tires and buying them every couple of months, depending on how much you drive, go ahead and do that. 
you can uh, drop it down to where they're like that and sitting up inside of the fender. Uh, be careful doing that, especially if you're on the highways a lot. You really don't want to get into them like that. But that is your call. It's your car. So you do what you feel is right. Uh, a lot of times people just go one click. I should say one notch. I'm sorry. And you usually stay pretty straight in the rear end. The IRS sometimes will work a little bit differently, though. So the inner and outer are pretty much clocked differently all right so a lot of folks will just pull the cap off they pull the arm out remember there's a lot of tension on this so i'll do a video on that and there's many online if you need it right away uh you just want to move this one notch okay but you're going to mark this before you do that okay so that you if you want to go back to the factory you know height then you're okay uh, and then you're going to move it up one notch, up in the air, okay? And then that would drop the car down. Now, if you have a Baja and you're trying to raise it, uh, you can do coilovers. I put them on before they ride really rough. Air shocks, I'm not an air shock guy because if you blow a line and you're out, well, then you're kind of screwed. So uh, you can raise or lower doing this. Obviously, you would go this way a notch if you want to bring the car up. Okay, but this is mostly about lowering. Uh, I did the coilovers a while back. It did raise the car to the point where I had to jack the bottom of the shock up to get it to bolt at the bottom. How crazy is that? Car looked good. I was 16 years old and had some big tires under the back. But when I hit a cigarette butt, it felt like I would just hit a pothole. That's how bad it was. So... That's how you do it in the back. I will do an extensive in-depth video when I do that. Uh, obviously, we got a big hole here and got body work to do first. But uh, that's how you do the back. The IRS and the swing axle are all the same with this setup. That didn't change any at all, okay? And there's many other things I could go over with this. They sell adjustable spring plates, which are really cool. You can also use those. I believe they sell like an angled spring plate also uh, for lowering. So there's many different ways to do this. All right, so in a nutshell, that is how you lower the Volkswagen Beetle, okay? It's not, there's nothing hard about it, but especially the front end, a lot of calculations come into play, okay? And I won't go over all that again. So just take your time and think straight before you start ordering parts. Like I did. <laughs> I'm gonna. This is brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on the marketplace, give somebody a little bit of a discount, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy an adjustable beam and put that in. So lots of great videos coming up as soon as I get this uh, rust bullet and body work done. One thing you're gonna want to do, whether you get a new one or not, okay? I know this is brand new and it's all pretty and shiny. Two things you need to know. Okay, these are important. One, remove the grease fittings out of your old beam, your, your German beam, and reuse them in here. The new fittings seem kind of creepy. Like, I don't know. That was probably the wrong word, but they don't seem to fit right. Uh, secondly, I don't know what this coating is on here. So what I'm going to do is wipe it off real good with thinner or acetone. And I'm going to put on, you know, rust bullet. So I like rust bullet. Now make sure that you don't get it in the threaded holes for your grease fittings or uh, where your steering box and everything bolts out. You don't want it, I meant the steering dampener. You don't want to clog those threads up and don't get them inside where your bearings are like you see here. So I advise you heavily to rust bullet it or whatever you like, pour 15, whatever, but you definitely want to coat it because if not, this can happen here. Here is my old front beam. And now the reason I'm going to hang on to it, and I'll tell you why in a minute, is I'm going to repair it and have it as a backup. See that there? Pretty bad. The other side's perfect. It looks brand new over there, believe it or not. Uh, but you can buy the plates for these and repair them. But the reason I'm going over this is 
make sure you use pour 15 or rust bullet on your new one and do it properly so that you don't have that happen. So that's something that I wanted to bring up. And you want to preserve this as long as you can. So that's my advice on that uh, for what it's worth. So let's tell you what's upcoming and let's close out. So that was how to lower the Volkswagen Classic Beetle, or raise it too. Uh, I hope when you folks are doing this and you start messing with front end parts and lowering and shims, take your time, do not rush, please. And also uh, my family told me to make up a Christmas list, my four kids and wife, so I did. So we will see what we get to open in boxes in about three, four weeks. I don't know what date it is, probably three weeks from now. Uh, if you would like, I'll go ahead and I will open all the boxes that I get in packages, so to speak, and uh, show you what I got. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Heather and I will get together and do a Christmas video coming up in a couple of weeks, right before Christmas, because we appreciate all of you. So we're going to do a walkthrough tour, show you some Christmas decorations, what we did our home, and do our yearly Christmas video. I think I did it alone last year. I can't remember. Uh, the heater boxes I'm starting on in a couple of days. Like I said, it's a cheap fix. Don't laugh. If you don't want to see it, back out of it. But it'll help some folks that don't have much money. It's a low-budget fix. So, okay. Thanks for being here. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you over the weekend. I'll notify you either tomorrow night or Sunday night when the chat will be. Everybody have a safe weekend.